Welcome to episode eight of the Brannigan Communications Podcast. Today we are with Sally Brannigan and Julie Doherty, two of our longstanding team members, actually co-founder, right? Yeah. So co-founder, yeah. CFO, yep. Julie, director of HR and office. Operations. Operations. Yes. Yes. So we have some, some high-level individuals here for this discussion today. Um, what are we even talking about? Time management. And oh, time is so important. And related topics, I think. And yes. also other related topics, sure. So even just to start there, why, why time management? Why is this a topic of discussion at Brannigan? Well, I, I like time management because it saves money. So it's not everybody's perspective. <laughs> well, into that, why, you know, what, why is time management so important to an agency, especially maybe a smaller agency even more so? Well, I like to think of the number of people around the table. And every time somebody's late and you are sitting around chatting, that means that the meeting can't get started. And I just think about the overhead, the cost of all those people sitting there, even at a small agency. If you add it up, it's sobering. So I used to think of time management more as if you're late, it's disrespectful to the people around you. I still think that, but it's also disrespectful on a, on a larger scale for the company and in terms of the bottom line. And it makes people's jobs more difficult. Yeah, and in agency life, you have to account for all of your time because you're working on different clients. So you have to figure out what time you worked on which client so we can bill it back. So I think that's why, compared to the corporate world, agency world's a little different. We should be more aware and more, um, more informed about our time. And I think to a degree we are. The time tracking systems themselves can be uh, challenging sometimes because you don't want to spend too much time doing your time tracking. Doing your time. And it's probably not everyone's favorite part. It's probably one of my least favorite parts is filling out the timesheet. But I will say it is interesting. It all connects. Everything connects, right? So it, you fill out your time, and your time informs your budgets, and that informs the projects that you can work on. So once you kind of think of it from that lens, I think it's it's actually pretty interesting to – once we submit all of our time and then you guys come back with the reports, mm -hmm. it is kind of fun for me to kind of see, you know, what, where we spent our time in a month. Mm -hmm. once, the, once it's summarized, the data is interesting. Right. And everybody likes to look at it in that format. Nobody likes to actually enter it. Right. Well, yeah. and to put a dollar amount to it, too, and mm -hmm. see where you are over or under budget, I think that's key. Yeah, it's like it's the backbone of everything, really. So it's it's one of these things where it's like, oh yeah, you have to enter your time, but it's also arguably one of the most important things you do in a given day or week, whatever your process is. I agree is. with that. Yeah. yeah. So, time management platforms. Um, what's been the evolution here as you've grown the company? We have had the same time management or time tracker for. Um, 12 years now and it's evolved so it was um, it's always been internet based but it's been revamped and um, improved I don't know I think annually at least annually mm -hmm. uh, and it connects directly to our uh, financial system and it's accessible mobily and from multiple computers for each employee. Uh, so there hasn't really been an evolution in terms of what provider we use, but the as the world has changed in the past 12 years, the world has changed a lot in terms of tracking anything because it's become so easy. Uh, technology has made it better. We, I think, have gone through phases where we paid more attention so depending on if you have a lot of small clients or several large clients, the amount of time that you spend looking at the data changes, the size of the team impacts it, um, the split of resources. I think as our work has changed, how we've done as we've gone into more social media and more digital work, uh, the kind of 
time tracking that we need and where we need to focus has changed a little. But the main struggle is always getting people to do it accurately and on time. On time, right? Hmm. Yes. So that's the that's kind the, of eternal the struggle. Yeah. The struggle is real. <laughs> well, so to that end, what how do you what kind of how do you kind of show that priority other than saying like this is like the lifeblood is figuring out what we spend our time on here, but you know, how is it has it been a challenge over the years? Has it just been a constant, like you're saying, a constant struggle? Has it, you know, how has it evolved, like, in terms of the priority for every employee? Is it just like it's always on the bottom? Well, I think it is sort of on the bottom. It depends on your personality. People who are very organized kind of like to have it off their list, so they do it faster. Uh, I think that we have always focused on it to some degree, but there gets to be a tension point, you know, when we when we need the data for some kind of a summary or, or or payroll or payroll every couple of weeks, then that drives it. Tom and Kathleen both used to work at a company, an agency, that you couldn't log into your computer until you had done your time from the day before. So you couldn't do your work until you had tracked your previous work. I love that. Yeah, that's I I, that's kind of what I was thinking of um, <clears throat> asking that question is have you – you've probably kind of thought about measures like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we've never managed to make that happen. No. And the reminder usually works. You know, if right. you're willing to remind people, they will do it. So yeah, and, and people get busy and they're working on, you know, actual work billable time, which is good. So that kind of falls to the bottom. But at some point you have to make it a priority when it's due – because, mm -hmm. yeah, we do run payroll and reporting on budgets for clients. So, mm -hmm. Well, we do have a system where you, you can't actually get paid until you have done your time. So that's important. That's, that's motivating. Yeah, sure. People are motivated by that. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you guys feel like it's something you're interested in, this idea of time management? Is it something that became part of your job because of, just the nature of an agency and stuff? Or is this like general concept, like we were talking about how the data is interesting. Like, is this general concept interesting? Did you find it interesting? I think it's interesting. And I think for all of us to varying degrees as uh, technology has become more part of our world and what we do every day, we spend so much time on computers and devices now that I think everybody's interested in a way, like how much there's this tension, this balancing act between technology makes things easier and more efficient, so you shouldn't spend as much time on things as you used to, and yet it sucks up a bunch of time, whether it's uh, for recreation social media or just the degree that information's at your fingertips. You can go down a rabbit hole and spend yeah more time than you really should yeah. like i the iphone like they'll send you a week, weekly report about how much screen time you've had and that's so, a recent development yeah story. that's yeah. interesting oh my gosh i spent like 90 percent of my time on instagram or whatever yeah and that's kind of right a reaction to people starting to say i'm spending way too much time staring at my phone so then apple says okay well we'll send you this report to show you how you're doing you know, so it's kind of like you're saying, time management's becoming more part of the consciousness a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. I think it should be. One thing I like about it is you can kind of reflect on what you did in the past week. Mm -hmm. You know, usually I'm like a bi weekly time filler outer. So I try to do it once in the middle of the week and then fill in any blanks uh, either at the start of the next week or at the end of the same week. So. It's good for me to kind of remember everything that I did, and it kind of even, in a way, like keeps me up to date with things. So I feel like that's an un unintended benefit of it. Yeah, if there's a project that you haven't worked on at all. Yeah, and you're like, oh, maybe I should re-engage with that or check in on that, or I don't know. There's just kind of, it's a good reflective tool in a yeah, way. Yeah, do you, do you think you remember pretty well during the week, like to do what, what you did for an hour or like you know each snippet of client time i feel like it'd be easier to do it every day so you remember but yeah for whatever reason it just never clicked with me that way maybe it still will but for now like 
I do have a good recollection of how much time yeah. I spend on things. I go, what I do is look in my like sent emails, I look at my meeting schedules, I look in kind of my general regular workflows and um, remember the day mm-hmm. as it went. I think there are very few people that do it every day, even though yeah, it's no, known to be more <laughs> accurate if you do it every day. But it's hard to mm-hmm. be that regimented. Yeah, and that's why I like the lock screen thing is interesting because obviously you would be better with that. Yeah, you'd have to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can see pluses and yeah. minuses to it. That's, yeah, that's hardcore, but... <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, maybe down the road. <laughs> yeah, you never know. So um, I think that's kind of a good summarization of, like, the value of time management here at Brannigan, like, on a really, like, micro level down to the, what do we do down to, like, the 15-minute yeah. increments. Mm-hmm. So kind of zooming out to this broader idea of time management, um, I have a little quiz for you guys. Not really a quiz. It's a reaction quiz, all right? So we have some tips that I've stolen from the internet. Um, (laughs) Time management tips that work, it's called. I'm just going to read them to you guys as our foremost time management experts. We'll see if you guys agree, disagree, if you would have some notes, you know, see if they align with what you do. Let's just kind of... uh, I think, you know, in general, these tips you can kind of find on, like, a lot of Internet articles. So I think it would be interesting to see what we think of these kind of um, generally accepted time management tips. All right? Sounds good. Are we ready? We are ready. Time management tip that works, number one. Spend a week keeping a time diary. Now, this is kind of like our time diary. Yeah, I feel like this is what we do at work already. So we agree with this one. Yeah. I, I, I think totally agree. I don't know one. that you need to keep one in personal life, but if a you time gonna, diary. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why people would keep a time diary for the personal. I don't know. Well, it's a that's good an question. Interesting thought. Yeah, but for work, it's necessary. True. All right, that's a that's a easy starter. Okay. Number two, make appointments with yourself. What do we think about that? I do that all the well, that's time. That's like reminders mm-hmm. on your phone, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah. like the next day, if I need to remember to do something, I totally put an appointment in for myself mm-hmm. so it pops up and I remember. Right. So I guess I do that too for actual like appointments. Or I stuff. put reminders on my phone, but I feel like if I put in an appointment, I'll actually do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's so. kind of like what's the, is it because an appointment's like a more official Notification, you know, like what's the difference between those two things in your in your head? That's interesting. Mm, that's a good. Sometimes the reminders don't work. See, yeah. like yeah. that's the thing. They're not as good. They're not as yeah accurate. I wouldn't. They're good. Ah, there and it is. you have time out if it's an appointment, even if it's a short appointment, you have some specific amount of time that's allocated to whatever you had to do. Mm-hmm. The reminder just tells you this is when you should do it. It's easy to think to yourself, okay, I will, and then you don't. Yeah. So it's a little more binding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good word. Bindy. Oh, thank you. This one's uh, kind of interesting. Engage in the thoughts, activities, and conversations. Is that being like, what I take that as is like be present. Hmm. Like we're talking about social media and how much time we spend on that. Not that we need to get in a social media discussion, but to be present. Hmm. That's what it means? I'm Engage in the thoughts, activities, and conversations. As a time management tip. I don't know if that's a time management tip. I think that's a quality of life tip. Like, don't do everything. Yeah. Don't do everything halfway. Yeah, if you're doing and be something, present. really do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then at least the conversations you're having would be more fulfilling. Mm-hmm. That's sure. But... As a time management tip, yeah, maybe we disagree. Number, I think four, not sure. Schedule time for interruptions as a time management tip. Mm-hmm. I just think those come naturally. I don't know how you schedule that. I think that's, those are mutually exclusive. 
An interruption by its very that's called multitasking. Not scheduled. <laughs> Don't you think that's called multitasking? Like sure. that's interruptions. You you're doing one thing and then you have to go to another thing. Quick. Right. If people come into your office. Yeah. Myself. Ask you a question or whatever. Yeah. That's multitasking. Yeah. Well, so the example that they give in the subhead here is like a professor would have office hours. So you're basically mm -hmm. allowing time for people to come in and talk to you. And you're moving all the interruptions to one set time so that they're not really interruptions. Mm. Yeah, I don't know that works in the, the business world. I think, no. well, and in our office, open door policy, very... Yeah you know, flat where you can kind of go in and talk to anybody at any time. It's any time can be, and an interruption is kind of like a, I feel like a bad word to put on it because somebody can come in and ask a question or want clarification on something or just want to run some ideas by you. And it's, I don't really feel like that's an interruption, but it's not like a planned activity. Like you do in theory lose time doing something you might otherwise be doing, but it's not necessarily wasted time, I guess. What do you think? I agree with that. And I think even further that you could, one of the tips might be to uh, communicate electronically instead of interrupting somebody. So send an email or chat electronically instead of going to their office. I actually think that you save time in the long run by going to a person's office I because agree. you have a more meaningful and uh, rich communication and it often takes a shorter amount of time than the back and forth would if it was on email yeah. or and sometimes email. the message gets lost and you mm -hmm. don't you know you don't know exactly I the think it's tone. easier to talk face to face Very much make so. the time to talk face to face yep or at least a phone call or something yeah I think you're right about that like emails the message can get lost or just not as conveyed as as easily as just talking to somebody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I would say Interruptions is not the right way to say it. No. You know, in general. Next time management tip that works, take the first 30 minutes of every day to plan your day. I think that's probably good advice. I never do that. I jump right in and start doing yeah. whatever was hot that I didn't get done the day before. And that probably is very good advice. Mm. Yeah, I don't do that either. I, I keep like a stack of stuff and I always put stuff on top so I kind of go through a pile of stuff or emails or whatever and mm -hmm. do so it that way. So when you make your stack, you're planning the day. You just do it the night yeah, before. Yeah, I guess I do the night before. Like I'll stack certain things on top mm -hmm. and then I know to get to that first. I make a list so. the night before too. So I guess so, we are doing that, but we're not doing it in the yeah. morning. We're doing it the night before. You maybe take the last 15 minutes of your day to plan your next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes or if sometimes I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think it's some days if you really feel like you have a bunch of things going on and you just need to like list them out, even that helps, you know. Yeah, yeah the power of the list, it's real. Yeah, we covered that in a previous episode, the like organizational power of the list, but it's also a time management kind of thing. Yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. If you see six things on your list, you kind of get an idea for how much time you're going to need for those things, adding in your other obligations throughout the day. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. Decide what result you want to attain. Hmm. Hmm. So here's one example that they're going to say. Take five minutes before every call and task to define your goal. I think that takes a lot of time. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> But, okay, so I think, I don't know what I would have said without reading that, decide what result you want to attain, but if you think about it in terms of a meeting, if you set out, you know, what we do, maybe an agenda or something, if you set out a path yeah. for whatever it mm -hmm. is, I do think it makes your time more valuable and productive. Yes. Yeah. Just you're flying right. in that the, case. Yeah, in flying that Flying by the seat of your pants is often a time waster. Right. Unless it's on a podcast. Yes. Not saying anyone's doing that <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, this one. Okay, I'll read it. Let the world know that you are busy. Oh my gosh. I have to say, everybody's busy nowadays. And if you have to be reminding the world about it all the time, 
you're annoying people because they feel like you're making their busyness seem second to your right. busyness. Yeah, I feel like I people that's rude. Yeah, do that on social media oh, a lot. So busy. Like, oh yeah, I'm so busy and this is what I'm doing and they keep posting stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I and think yes, it gets kind of annoying. Yes, there are people who are more busy than anyone. Like it's all on a scale, mm-hmm. but everybody lives in their own world and in your own world you probably feel very busy that's our culture has gotten kind of crazy that way yeah yeah it's a very easy thing for everyone to say like oh yeah i'm super busy Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. i I mean yeah letting the world know that you're busy i I feel like that's a a hard now is there an example something like take part of the day and shut your door yeah because i could see if you have a project due or something that's unusual yes shut your door and send the message that you have to get this done. Yeah, and I think that even that's a little bit different than just like, I don't even know how you would let the world know you're busy. It seems like they're trying to be more like pushy about it. If you have your door shut, you're working on something. I think that's like a good um, subtle way of showing that, you know, I need some time right now. Mm -hmm. But just to kind of like walk around with your hair on fire and like, oh my God, I'm just swamped today. I just can't believe it. I can't even much more productive than let the world know you're busy yeah. to me is be comfortable having boundaries and saying no when something doesn't work for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good call too. You got to you got to be able to say no to some things or at least prioritize a little bit and not mm-hmm. say yes to everything at once at least. Mm-hmm. So the headline we disagree with there. I think we're on to number eight. Don't instantly give people your attention. I kind of agree with that, that if you are constantly being pulled, like the phone rings and you automatically answer it. An email comes in, you automatically look oh, at it. Oh, yeah, that way. You, auto- you need to be able to have dedicated time to do some project or some task. And if that means that you don't automatically respond to people, now, generally, if someone comes to your office, I feel like our culture here is very much like that is welcome. So it would be the anomaly, I think, here when you would say, hey, could you come back a different time? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think um, it's an interesting, I think that it, an in-person, like a, a pop-in in the office, I think is worth kind of handling in, in the moment. But um it is a big tenet of time management. Like if, if you drop what you're doing to respond to this next email and then the next email that comes in after that, you drop the email you're working on to hit that one, it's, you're just never going to get anything done very quality. You'll get a bunch of things like 30% done, you know? Mm-hmm. I think so. people do that, though, a lot in their personal lives. So they feel they need to respond, like, right away. You think it's or, more of a personal life thing? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess I try to respond to emails right away too depending on the I think it is more personal like I think it's a text culture yeah like why didn't you text me back or you know like if you wait like an hour or something like where is somebody and the three bubbles when you see someone typing you're like what's taking so long Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then if it never comes what does it mean yeah they just stopped did they they throw their phone in the garbage what what happened you know? They decided my message wasn't worth it. Yeah, what? they just deleted all I that. They were taking. I think for people. Like yeah, minutes. I think people get fixated on that. Mm-hmm. I think most people are pretty good at work, though, about setting at least yeah. some blocks of time. It's a constant thing, room for improvement. Like just not being in your inbox all the time and focusing on whatever it is you're focusing on, checking in your email enough times to not be missing anything, but not living in it. It's something that I always try to work on. Yeah. And I'm never quite perfect at. I don't think I'm good at it, but you see a notification up and then you're like, yeah, you just got to try to break your brain from that, but it is difficult. Multitasking in general, I think can just go too far. Like if you would take the time to, to work on one thing at a time, it actually would take a shorter amount of time and you would feel more at peace with your work. Yeah. I like to minimize the emails that I need to respond to so don't forget them, like, during the day if I need to get back to them. I don't always maybe get back to them right away, but I minimize them 
and know that I have to do it. Right, you can't close out the window until you... Oh, forget. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's smart. I don't do that. Yeah, I minimize them all in the morning. If, like, I get a whole bunch or when you come back from vacation, minimize them all, and then I go through them So they're all sitting on your desktop as little icons. Well, yeah, or in my Outlook. They don't come up. Yeah. Huh. That's one... That's a nice little tip I do. tip. I like that. See? Our own tips that work. Good one. Thanks. Yeah, I do feel like the more you can just focus in on one thing at a time, it's the best thing for your overall day, your time management, your quality of work. Mm-hmm. But it's a, yeah, it's a struggle sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? Oh, block out other distractions. Some of these are like overlapping a little bit. You know? Yeah, I would agree. I think we kind of already talked about that. Yeah. Like, close your door if you need to to work mm-hmm. on a project. Or and yeah, like, don't look at your phone. Try not to, you know, respond to every text as it comes in. Yeah, I yeah. think that one's pretty obvious. I agree. I think this is the last one. Another questionable one: set realistic goals. And I say questionable because it's kind of obvious. And broad. That's yeah. too broad. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. So. I mean, they're saying it's impossible to get everything done. Also, remember that odds are good that 20% of your thoughts, conversations, and activities produce 80% of your results. Mm. Mm. That's more interesting than the tip itself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> I don't know if I have a comment for that one. Set realistic goals, I guess. I guess the only thing is, like, the idea of you can't drink the ocean. You have to just kind of... Mm-hmm. One thing at a time. It goes into what we were just talking about. They should have said that. That's more poetic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Makes me thirsty too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have covered time management tips at work and our thoughts on those. We've covered Brannigan's history and the importance of time management to this company, probably really to agencies at large, to companies at large, to productivity. Um, anything else that we are missing in terms of this conversation, time management, tips? I don't think so. I think we covered a lot of it. Yeah, set aside a little time for podcasts, but when it's time to be done, be done. It's my time management tip. That's actually good. We have completed. We don't need to keep droning on. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on the Brannigan Communications Podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you.